Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a playthrough for The Spill. This one is a cooperative game for one of our players from Smirk and Dagger Games. Yeah, you heard that right. Smirk and Dagger is usually known for their take that highly competitive games, but they could not reduce producing The Spill. In this one, you are playing scientist and marine biologist, and you have just gotten word that an oil rig in the middle of the ocean has exploded and it is seeping oil into the ocean, threatening the marine life. Will you, as this scientist, be able to go out, push back the oil, which are represented by these dice, rescue enough of the animals in order to win the game? This one is very much a pandemic style cooperative game uh, in which there is that short term, long term threat. The short term threat being those dice that are invading upon the marine life. You got to rescue them uh, before too many of them die. Uh, you have to put your set collection over here in terms of some of the dice and uh, some of the marine life that you're going to be collecting. So short term and long term pulling you uh, different ways. The big wrinkle here is this cube tower. So I have a bag full of dice right there. And every turn, I'm going to be clack, clack, clacking those dice, distributing them and dealing with whatever comes out. When this was live on Kickstarter, Mike on the One Stop Co-op Shop did a preview for this game uh, with prototype components. So I'm happy to bring you the final production copy of The Spill. But before I get to all that, let's talk about the One Stop Co-op Shop. You're on the YouTube channel. There's also the YouTube stream channel. Please make sure you are subscribed to both those channels and like the videos that you enjoy. We have our podcast, hundreds of episodes of gaming-focused content for you to enjoy on your favorite podcast feed. We have our Discord, which is a great community, always talking about solo and cooperative, old favorites, new hotness. Uh, go ahead and join the conversation by clicking the link in the show notes below. We have our Patreon. We would very much appreciate a contribution that helps us keep the games on the table and the tech upgraded. In exchange, you get access to exclusive videos and also channels in our Discord. But if you just want to join the community, once again, it is completely free to join the overall community of the One Stop Co-op Shop. Your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. For the most part, I'm just going to jump right into the playthrough. I do want to pause, though, and talk a little bit about the player side stuff. So uh, these are four characters. You must play four characters. Uh, the game comes with eight. If you saw the playthrough with Mike of the prototype, then I'm going to play the other four characters. <laughs> Uh, so those characters that Mike played are basically unchanged. So let's go ahead and explore some uh, new powers. So uh, you have your uh, action economy over here. You have your player power. Each one is individuated a little bit. And there's also this row of tokens up here, which indicates how weather comes out. I'll show all how that all happens, but all that is contained in the player side. Here is the player resource board. This is how I track uh, progress towards winning. Uh, for the most part, uh, in most games, you're going to collect a certain amount of animals. Uh, there are six animals, uh, and you need to collect full sets, as well as collect a certain amount of oil. The game has scaling difficulty, so like, you know, easy, uh, middle, or hard in terms of its win conditions. Uh, you see that there is the one dot, two dot, and three dot situation right there. You're going to be playing with a two dot condition that I'll show in just a second. Uh, but for the most part, every game, you're going to be collecting sets of animals and removing oil from the board and also it would not be a pandemic style game without special events uh, i will describe those special events as we go uh, all you need to know right now is that you get the cubes to activate those special events these orange uh, ones right here by completing these goals by removing three dice i get a cube and i can fire off one of these events or collecting a full set of six I am playing on a standard difficulty, which uh, means I'm going to be dropping three cubes into the tower until I get a spill out. Uh, so, and I'll describe spill outs in just a second. That just means a lot of uh, dice in one place. <laughs> I'll show that um, very, very soon. I'm also going to play with this following win condition card. Uh, condition one, choose two animals before the game. Uh, save five of both of these marine animal types. I have chosen the dolphin and the turtle. Uh, and also save two full sets of marine life. So not only do I have to go down the track down here, I have to complete that set as well. So very much animal rescuing style game and remove a total of 12 oil dice for the game. Three, six, nine, 12. Let's see what I can do. The main draw of the game, of course, is the cube tower. At the beginning of every turn, I'm going to be dropping a certain number of, of these dice down here. And that's going to represent oil gushing out of the well. 
So uh, you may have seen pictures of the tower with some decals on the sides over here, like I have some decals on the bottom. However, in the current first run production copy, the stickers came out a little bit too big uh, and I had a hard time cutting them down. So I'm just gonna go uh, bare for now and hopefully uh, future printings will have the decal issue solved. All right, so I have set myself up with eight dice to begin the game. Uh, I dropped in the eight cubes, uh, whatever number comes out uh, in whatever quadrant, that's what I assign. So in this quadrant, uh, I got two six dice and those two six dice have been placed right there. Uh, same thing over here, I got a five over here, I got a four, etc. eight dice total. In this board layout, this is the most threatened space. So for a couple of reasons, number one, if I get another six here, uh, then uh, this animal will become contaminated. So if I drop the cube and then another six appeared here on that very action, this animal will be contaminated. I have one turn in order to rescue it. And if I don't get to rescue it, it is going to go into the sick bay. There's space to hold animals in a sick bay, but I cannot hold one of each of the six types of animals, nor can I hold three of one type of animal. Both of those are a lose condition. The other loss condition is if I get too many spill outs. If I add a third die over here for any reason, then this would become what the game calls a spill out. So then uh, what would happen is uh, I would advance the spill out track. So then in future turns, I would be at risk of dropping more cubes into the dice tower. That's inevitable. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, very hard to avoid at least a couple of times. Uh, but I'm going to want to clear these out because uh, if I get more dice in here, they're going to spread to other places. They could change. It's like a pandemic style game. Uh, and if I get six of these columns uh, in the game, then I will have lost a uh, game of the spill. So I'm going to begin my turn with the sea captain. I distributed all four boats randomly around the board, one per quadrant. Uh, here is the sea captain uh, in quadrant, uh, this quadrant over here to the east in number one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one AP to rescue a marine animal. Uh, also, if, uh, as I showed those contaminated animals, it would be two AP to rescue one of those contaminated animals. We don't have to worry about that right now. Let's just go ahead and rescue this turtle. Reason being is I know I need to rescue a lot of turtles and dolphins for this particular game. So let's get started right away. Every character gets a special action. The sea captain's special action coordinates with her move. So... According to the Sea Captain card, once per turn before a move action, you may transport the, to the same numbered space in an adjacent quadrant. Sea Captain's here. Uh, we are going to move her here as part of that action. So now I can take a move action and move two, either in this direction or this direction. You know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go here. That is my second action. The most powerful action in the game is to take a die and remove it from the game, put it on the resource board. However, that would cost me three AP. I only have two left right now. I have an option. If I wanted to, I could trigger an extra action. So giving me three, I would remove a die from the bag and I would roll that in addition to the three that I would have to roll. So then four dice would be placed in the bag in exchange for having that extra action. That is definitely going to get used at some point, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a management action. I'm just going to spend one AP to push this in the bag. I will see this die again. Three AP, we'll remove it from the game. One AP puts it back in the bag to see again. So that is my third action on the turn. And the fourth action, we're going to rescue animals. I need these ones too. And now for the moment I know people have been waiting for, uh, the beginning of the next turn, we are going to spill some oil. I have pulled three dice out of the bag. Here we go. All right, we have a five and a three in the southern quadrant and in the east we have a three. This three is no big deal. This three is a little bit more threatening. This five, I don't like that. Uh, they have contaminated an animal and they've also contaminated one of my precious turtles. <laughs> Lots of bad things are happening here. But that is all the basics when it comes to the spill. Let's dive into the playthrough proper. It is now the marine biologist's turn. Their special power, uh, they can rescue animals that are on sectors adjacent to their current sector. She is my rescue animal for that very rescue heavy wind condition that I'm playing with. And boy howdy, is he gonna go to town. So it takes two AP to rescue a contaminated animal. They stay contaminated, but that's okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of the wind conditions require that you have contaminated animals in your sets. So uh, <laughs> I'm not worried about that. So that is two AP. We are also going to go three, four. 
uh, because uh, I need to rescue this dolphin and this also progresses me towards my set. Getting cubes early is very, very helpful. Let's see what the cube tower has to offer now. Uh, they will offer me a weather dice though. There's only four of these. Uh, so whatever uh, lands is going to affect all the characters on their next turn. Let's see what happens. We have, oh boy, the east is getting assaulted. <laughs> and we have plus one AP. Here is the space with the weather effects. There are five bad ones and one good one. <laughs> I happen to get the good one. That's not going to happen every single time. That means perfectly clear skies, wind at our backs. We all get one bonus AP to spend on our next turn. Uh, this does not carry over, so I need to use it on my next turn or each character's next turn. Uh, use it or lose it. And I have another threatening situation over here uh, with the fours. Uh, this octopus is threatened as well. Good thing there's nobody here. <laughs> It is the meteorologist's turn. Their special powers that they are not affected by these symbols. They see it coming. <laughs> uh, but uh, they don't have to worry about that this turn. And so let's go uh, animal rescuing. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. This one is threatened. I need my turtles. And it helps me build my sets. All right. We got our three dice there. Come on, the East needs to not be assaulted so much. Uh, just to let everybody know, I did test this uh, cube tower because you have to take it apart and put it back together whenever you um, play this game. Uh, it is a little bit difficult to store uh, just as a big thing, so you have to take it apart, pull it together. That means that it could lean or have some sort of... Um, problem to it, but I did test it before the playthrough. Uh, just dice were distributing evenly. So even though this has barely been uh, occupied, uh, I have f full confidence that I have given myself the best chance at even distribution. I say that because that's fine, but I am, my Eastern Quadrant is definitely in a lot of trouble. My final character is the Requisition Officer. This team gets five resource cards to begin the game. I probably should have mentioned that. There are four resource cards uh, up top. This is the fifth one uh, that is was drawn randomly uh, because of the Requisition Officer. When this person uses a resource, you may uh, replace the newly drawn card with one from the discard pile. So a little bit more focused attention on the resource cards, which could be good, but you don't get a lot of cubes. <laughs> I'm not really sure how useful this character is going to be, but I'm going to play it just for you people. So I am not loving the uh, requisition officer's options. So we are just going to do the best that we can with what we have. <laughs> so we are going to continue to rescue turtles. And that is going to go towards our second set of seahorses right there. That was two actions. We're going to go three. Definitely uh, rescue that uh, dolphin and five, which pushes that back into the bag. The reason why I rescue that dolphin is because at the end of the uh, turn, uh, this one will go into sick bay. Uh, there are only six dolphins out there. I need to rescue five for the uh, victory condition. So I can only afford to lose one dolphin, but luckily I've already rescued four of each. Uh, so I am very close to that victory condition and also to starting to getting to resource cubes. So I don't know if this helps, but I'm actually going to throw them in with the other hand this time and see if I get some different results. Uh, never mind. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, I have two spill outs that I'm looking at. I'll put that there. That's nothing. But holy moly, I have two spill outs. Uh, so they, I'm going to progress that token by two. Let's put two tokens over there. Again, these uh, don't indicate uh, anything game-wise. They're just kind of like flags. They're like, okay, pay attention to this. Uh, and I get two uh, contaminated animals. This is a disaster. Move my token over there by two. So I'm going to begin the turn with my sea captain. Uh, back at that part of the order. Not too much going on over here, so they're going to use their action. Uh, they're going to use, before they move, they can flip positions on the board and head to where all the action is. Oh my goodness! So they're going to take that action, and then they would move, but I'm not going to move for now. Uh, instead, I'm going to use my second action of the turn and rescue this final dolphin. So now I have my five. I don't have to worry about dolphins anymore. So then that is going to be three, 
and I'm going to use an extra action uh, from the pool. So for four, five, six, I'm going to remove this and put it in the removed oil. I am now one of 12 <laughs> towards. Uh, I'm going to hope that I don't get another four. If another four lands here, then this would go to the sick bay immediately. That's no good. And because I did not have the spare action, I have to take this pelican and put it in the sick bay. Once again, if I get six unique animals in sick bay, I lose the game. And so for that, I had to put an extra die in the uh, extra action place, but I also pulled this weather die. So in terms of oil, it'll be the same. I just get extra weather condition. Let's see. All right. No. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Stay away from there. All right. I got one per quadrant. I do not place the uh, weather die over there, but this means I place uh, three extra cubes in the tower. <laughs> Something tells me this is not going to go well. All right. Uh, but at least I am not going to the east so far. That hasn't been too bad. Let's go ahead and place these western ones. Six and one. Not too, too bad. We got six, one, and five. That's one of those things that'll... I don't feel that now, but I will definitely feel that later. And the same situation with this three. Sea Captain goes. Uh, she is not going to use her special power this turn to rescue animals from adjacent because we got plenty to do right here. Uh, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And that is the last of my bonus AP. So you'll notice that I'm removing at, at the most one cube per turn. Uh, and that is not <laughs> every turn. And then I add three per turn. So there is going to be a lot of oil by the time this game is done. So we have, oh boy, the uh, <laughs> my poor uh, eastern side is getting assaulted yet again. And I have another spill uh, right there that is bringing me up to three total spills right now. Or actually two total spills. Uh, so this spill out uh, that is over in the east gets removed uh, when this uh, doesn't apply. But I have the spill out there which will progress me to uh, one last little spot of three before I get into even worse territory. And so the meteorologist knows what to do. We are going to go one, two, three. That's going to get removed, and that one is going to get pushed back into the bag. Uh, this spill out is no longer applicable, but the damage has probably been done. Let's place that die over here, and now we finally have a resource cube. So I have five total cards, but these are the two cards that I'm looking at specifically because my team is weaker on removing oil. Uh, all my characters use those three actions, which is just a pain in the butt. But with Dredge, I can remove an oil die in my sector and place it in the removed oil area. I could pretty much do that now, but we're going to save that for now. Uh, also, Fire Boom, after dropping dice in the spill phase uh, in the cube tower, but before assigning them to sectors, remove one of them and place them in the removed oil area. You notice that there are two uh, sections over here. Uh, that means that it's such a powerful ability that I need to assign two cubes to it. Don't have two uses of it, assign two cubes to use it once. So I'm going to save up. I'm going to probably use Fire Boom uh, and also cycle Fire Boom or Dredge uh, with the Requisition Officer. That is the current plan. I didn't directly place the five on the camera, but take my word for it. This Stingway got toasted. That is unfortunate. All right, so speaking to that requisition officer, let's see what they can do. A st again, with the east. I am not happy with this at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and get another spill out. Are you kidding me? Now I have four dice that I'm going to be rolling. Uh, the spill out is over there. That's kind of bad uh, placement in terms of those tokens, but what are you going to do? Look at this horror show over in the east right there. I am so close to getting multiple spell outs, and I have a contaminated octopus that would complete the ocean thing set as well ah the poor requisitions officer is in no man's land back there behind my poor uh cube tower so we're gonna go one two rescue this octopus and then one two rescue this stingway hopefully by the next turn if i haven't lost by then they can get into this quadrant and start cleaning Reason I did those rescues is to set myself up for some sets. So I have, I'm working my way towards the second set and I have achieved my first. I have a second resource cube. And I know that resource cube is going to go on fire boom. Uh, so I'm going to drop four cubes in there. Uh, but after dropping those dice, but before assigning them, I can remove them and put them in the removed oil. I need to remove oil. I need to remove 12 oils. That's just a lot. Didn't realize how much that's going to be. Uh, but I'm going to put everything I got into accomplishing that goal. 
All right, so we're going to pray to the god of ecology or whoever that is that I am not going to get continue to get assaulted in the east. Please. <laughs> oh, come on. That is not a good thing. Uh, there we go. There's the west. There's the south. Now give me one in the north. Give me one in the north. That's, of course, that's in the south. So these two are not too terrible at all. This one, actually, because this is already a spill out, it would go here. Uh, so that it just overflows. It doesn't uh, trigger anything bad. It just, you know, continues to mount up there. Uh, this one would contaminate a uh, seahorse. The bot needs a seahorse to complete its set. So I am going to use the fire boom on that one. Let's get rid of this five and put it in the removed oil. Our fire boom has been used. It is now the discard pile. I get to pull uh, from the deck again. I get weather radar, reroll a weather die, treat those faces as one AP bonus instead. I doubt I'm going to use that uh, because I already have my weather specialist and everything else that's going on. And I've already uh, seen two of the four weather dice. Uh, so likely when I fire off a power, I'm going to try to recover fire boom with the requisition officer. All right. So the captain is in harm mitigation mode. Uh, so let's go ahead and take one spill out off of the board. We're going to go one, two, three, four. I'm almost halfway there to my removed oil goal. I'm also very close to doom. Doom, I say! We got one in the south, one in the north. I'll actually take that. One in the east, of course. <laughs> and two in the north, the neglected north. Uh-oh. Uh that five is going to go over here. Uh, the one is actually going to contaminate this pelican, uh, which it uh, actually wouldn't complete its set, uh, the set of six. But if it gets three pelicans, this would be the second. If it gets three, then that would also be a loss. While I'm here, it gets a seahorse. that w It does need that to complete its set of six. The marine biologist is going to go on an animal rescuing spree again. They're going to go one, two, three, four. Their special power is that they can rescue animals in adjacent sectors. The reason for that is I am able to complete two things, one of which is to get a resource cube, and the other uh, is to complete my victory condition. Actually, I've completed two victory conditions, save five of both of these marine type animals I have, and also save two full sets of marine life I have. I just need to get a whole bunch of dice. All right, we're going to drop them in there one at a time and pray to God that it does not go in the east. Of course it does. <laughs> Although there are so many at this point, uh, I have no idea what's going to happen. This six is going to rotate uh, clockwise to the five. The north I'm completely abandoning <laughs> because it's not that bad. And I cleaned up most of the animals there. Unfortunately, uh, that five is going to overflow into the four. Uh, instantly claiming because it is already contaminated. Uh, that's how that works. And that is another spill out. I'm going to be uh, dropping four dice. So the track doesn't matter at this point. But uh, I am progressed towards uh, the the loss condition of uh, having six uh, spill outs. So I have one, two, three, and one on the other side, four out of my six spill outs. <laughs> I am not doing well. And here we go. I forgot to put that down last turn. That is a contaminated octopus, another contaminated octopus, a third one, and I lose the game. And the meteorologist is kind of a no man's land over here, not liking what that was happening with their game at all. So we're just going to go one, two, three, just do the best we can. Slowly make our way down. <laughs> have that uh, group of six I have to deal with. So that's what they're going to deal with. Uh, but they did get one die. A contaminated seahorse is going to enter the area. So uh, that, at this point, they're four out of six progress towards their set of six. Uh, they would need a turtle, and I plan on rescuing a turtle next turn, so at least I don't have to worry about uh, them completing that set of six. I do have to worry about the pelican. Oh, oh by the way, <laughs> did I forget that? I have to worry about the pelican and the octopus, uh, them getting a third of those. I think I'm realizing why Smirk and Dagger signed this game. This game is punishing. So even if it isn't the players punishing each other, the game, sure, uh, punishes you, puts you behind the eight ball. I'm really tired of this stuff going towards the east. Uh, let's try to get some better English on there. Uh, and I have two in the south. The south is another uh, spill out. Uh, so that will make five. I get that four over there. And there is literally so much oil over here that we go one, two, three, four. I am one away from losing the game. 
So forget rescuing this sea turtle. We have to clear out the east badly. Uh, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. We are also going to trigger the dredge. Remove an oil dye in your sector and place it in the removed oil area. That is going to be this five, which gets uh, me to eight. <laughs> eight out of 12. That's fantastic. The dredge gets discarded. And as the requisition officer's power, she is terribly underpowered. I may never play her again. But at least I'm using the power once. Going to get back this fire boom. And I do have one uh, cube uh, to activate it. So I'm just going to put the uh, fire boom cube on there. The second one is definitely going to go on there to try to get, desperately get <laughs> those uh, cubes uh, to work out. I can remove this. Thank goodness. All right. Four more cubes. More in the eastern section. Uh, we got the north that time. Oh, let's go ahead and give all four quadrants. That is a perfectly balanced cube tower, people. Not that I like what the cube tower is actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> because it is going to contaminate yet another animal because of a spill out. We get a one over here. That is another spill out. And finally, a one over here. That is my sixth and final spill out. I have lost the game. I call shenanigans. Next time, I am going to use a better character than the requisitions officer. And also, this meteorologist didn't do anything either. <laughs> <laughs> only uh, didn't do anything with those dice that came out of there. Uh, couldn't do anything. Uh, so I had basically functionally two uh, dead characters. Uh, and I'm sure I could have made a little bit more headway. And that could have made a difference. I had my two victory conditions and I was four dice away from the third. And I had resources to get those dice in there. So a couple of more turns and I could have won this game. But as it was, uh, that is a full playthrough of the spill. I hope that you enjoyed that. It is a very difficult co-op. There is a higher factor of randomness than in a pandemic game. Pandemic game, you get the uh, bad stuff happening out of a deck. It's a little bit more uh, predictable here. <laughs> not only could you have a concentration of stuff with uh, coming out of that cube tower without much to do, there's not a lot of options for movement. And also, I'm finding that it was pretty difficult to fire off and take full advantage of the... Um, the special events over here. So, you know, uh, it does put you behind the eight ball a little bit. The rule book says so, that this game does uh, you know, lay it into you. You have to try multiple times in order to get your victories and progress to the higher levels. If you like that, then uh, please give the spill a try. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop, reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.